Hello together! Welcome back to part 2 of this do-it-yourself proton pack tutorial. Let's begin with the 3D printable parts. All files can be downloaded at this address. The STL files are divided by name of their next higher assembly. I suggest you print the sub-assemblies of the pack separately, thereby keeping track of what has already been printed. You may have to cut the objects in slicing to fit to your 3D printer's print bed size. I use a Creality CR10 which has a 30 by 30 cm print bed. Therefore I only had to cut the biggest object, which is the sink generator. All prints were done without using support material. In this video I will show you how the single objects form the sub-assemblies and how the sub-assemblies then form the proton pack. The sub-assemblies use the names as defined in Stefan Otto's plans. Here is a list of the sub-assemblies. Sub-assemblies. Here we can see all sub-assemblies combined to form the proton pack. However, for the time being, we will exclude the wand due to its complexity and therefore it will get its own video. Now I want to show you where in the pack the sub-assemblies go. Later I will show you how the object parts form each sub-assembly. I will begin with a booster. It looks like this and it goes here. Crank generator goes here. Gun mount goes here and this is the point where the wand will be attached. Iron arm goes in the upper left corner. Next is the cyclotron. In contrast to Dance and Fool, in my design I have put cyclotron, cable clip and this object here, the end filter, which is this towery little guy here, in one sub-assembly as I thought that would make things easier. Next in line is the sink generator. This is by far the biggest object. So big in fact that I had to divide it in slicing to fit on the printer. Coming up is the bumper, that is this bracket-like structure down here. Cosmetic filler plates. Those are these shallow structures between the larger components. Some group together here north of the sink generator and there is a single one in the northeastern corner of the pack. Finally, the HGA, Hydrogen Gas Actuator. That goes here and you need to attach it slightly tilted in clockwise orientation so that the tubes that will be attached to the connectors run clear of the gun mount. Clipart valve. That one I almost forgot. There are two of these valves, one on the accelerator and one on the wand. On the accelerator it is attached here, on this plate which is part of the sink generator. Here on the accelerator the valve serves no purpose, it just has to look good. ELO box. This sub SE will be used to host the electronics and the loudspeaker. It is glued over a cutout in the carrier plate.
the loudspeaker will be fixed somewhere in this place. The ELO box fits into a cavity of the sync generator and the cyclotron. This box will be covered by a grid, which is held in place magnetically and lets the sound go through while granting access to the electrical switches. The booster consists of three shells. This one, this one, and this one. This is the orientation, this is up and this is down. This is the cutout where the iron arm fits in. Here we can see some openings in the shells. Through these we can lead cables for the electronics. This one as well. These two openings will take on the fuse holder and the charging connector. Use epoxy to glue the shells together like this. Next in line is this tube. This can be printed on the CR10 in one piece. You may have to cut it somewhere to fit to your printer's dimensions. Right here the tube is glued to the shell, which means that the tube is not supported through its entire length. Therefore we require a second fix point. So we make use of a small spacer plate, which has to be glued to the shell somewhere in this area to support the tube, as the tube will host the battery pack later and we need some extra structural integrity for the tube. The next objects are some knobs, which fit into these openings and click into the correct position. Next object is the plug for the tube. It goes here and it looks like this. This plug can be printed in one piece. Looking from the top side down the tube we can see this ring where the plug will be resting on. The ring is printed automatically in the tube. Next object is the PPD, primary power distributor. It looks like this and it goes here. Next is this ladder-like structure, the frame. It is attached to the tube right here and these two sticks complete the structure. To attach the frame there are already two holes in the tube right here and here. Use glue and screws to attach. The last two pieces are these two hex nut connectors where some tubes will be connected later. And that finishes up the booster assembly. The bumper. The bumper consists of only four parts. Those are the left hand bracket, the right hand bracket, 
a middle piece and a cylinder in the middle representing a spring. Paint the spring and silver and it looks pretty. In the center of the middle piece we can find a small hole. This we can use to exactly center the spring. Moreover we can find two holes on each side of the middle piece. These we can use to exactly center the bracket and to strengthen the glue connection by inserting a piece of threaded bar. When finally gluing the structure together, make sure that the distance between the lower ends of the bracket here and here exactly matches the width of the sink generator where this bracket is attached. If you don't meet the exact width, the bracket will be constantly under strain which will weaken the structure on the long term. Here we can see the holes where the attaching screws go through and into the sink generator. Like with the iron arm, this structure kind of stands off of the accelerator. If you bump your proton pack into something, you will most likely hit it with the iron arm or the bumper. Therefore make the glue connections extra solid. The clipart valve. I have redesigned the clipart valve to host a potty, which then can be used to regulate the volume of the sound amplifier. Of course, it can be built without the potty, then you just have to glue the turning knob directly to the cylindrical housing. There are two of these clipart valves in the proton pack, one on the accelerator and one on the wand, which is the one prone to host the POTI for volume control. The unit consists of three printable parts. First we have this lower ring, original design by Dance and Fool. Then we have this cylindrical structure where the POTI can be fit. And we have the turning knob on top, which can be either glued to the cylinder or stuck onto the POTI's axle, completing our clipart valve. The crank generator. The crank generator is almost completely left in the original design by Dance and Fool, except for the knob that originally consisted of three parts that had to be fit together, but there were alternatives available like the design that I pulled into this build, original design by Ghost Bear. You can also find this one on Thingiverse. Then the crank generator consists of two housing shells. This is the lower shell and this is the upper shell. These are printed separately and then fit together with epoxy glue. The knob then should be fit in this position. Everything that looks like it was movable should be made movable. To do that, you need to glue a longer piece of threaded bar to the knob the threaded bar must be long enough to reach through the whole upper shell, which looks hollow in this view, but once it's printed, it'll be a solid, including a bottom layer. Once the two shell pieces have been fit together, drill all the way through from the top to the bottom of the combined shells and fit the knob with its threaded bar. Make sure that the nut securing the threaded bar is glued to the threads so that the nut cannot come off on its own. B 
because if it does, you will have to remove the crank generator from the carrier plate to access the nut. Later, on one side of the crank generator, a corrugated tube will be fit. We can use this part to connect the tube to the crank generator. This part will be screwed and glued to the crank generator and then the corrugated tube will be pushed over it until the end of the tube reaches the housing of the crank generator. The tube will lock onto this connector and be held in position. If we didn't use this connector, we would have to glue the corrugated tube directly to the housing and as the tube is always under strain, it would come off sooner or later. Cyclotron. Now the cyclotron is a bit of a bigger task, as we have to take some electronics into consideration, which will make it more complicated. We start with part 1, that is this roundish structure. This can be printed on the CR10 as one piece. You may have to cut it in slicing. Here we can see the cable clip, which will be glued into this position. This open ring-like structure will be printed in one piece as well and then it is glued to part 1. Then these four rings must be glued to part 1. Each ring has a small protrusion on its top by which you can clip them into the openings in part 1. Inside the cyclotron we must fit a clear piece of plastic to each ring which then has to be dyed red. In my build I used plexiglass. Again on the inside to every piece of plexiglass we have to fit one of these white reflectors. Original design by user Count de Monet who also designed the complete original electronics build for this backpack. An LED module is then glued to the bottom of the reflector. Here we can see the completed structure from the bottom side. Here again a ring clipped into position on the outer side of part 1. Then the piece of plexiglass or any other clear plastic you may find, like a piece of blister packaging. And at last the reflector. Here an elbow connector is fitted to part 1, to which we later connect a silicone tube. We move on to the end filter, the nitrogen filter. That is this cylindrical object, which also can be printed in one piece. You can print this without supporting material, and in my builds I prefer to fit some metal mesh on the inside of these openings so that you cannot look directly into the end filter. It helps with the illusion. Inside this cylinder we have these two objects. This here is a holder bracket for an axial fan. I will display the fan for demonstration purposes only here, which looks about like this. The second one down here is a distributor for the smoke coming from the e-cigarette atomizer. The smoke is then pushed out of the end filter by the air coming from the axial fan. There is a little tower in the middle of the distributor where the smoke comes out and where four LEDs are fit which are lighting the smoke column from the inside, which is a pretty good effect.
The smoke coming from the atomizer is fed into the distributor by a small tube. I used a brass tube here, but you can also use a plastic one. Here we see the tube to which the silicone tube coming from the atomizer is connected. Which concludes the cyclotron. The ELO box. Now the ELO box consists of its main carrier plate. It looks like this. Now in contrast to some video footage shown in later parts of my video tutorial series, I have redesigned this part a little bit. In the footage already shot, I am using a variant of this part which has closed side walls. The main piece consists of a base plate with a small box printed on it, which will later contain all the electronics. You can choose between two electronics options. For option 1, the breadboard version, you need to print this inlay and glue it into the box. All the electronic components you need can then be fitted into the small boxes of the inlay. These electronic components are then connected by jumper wires. If you prefer to use the professional PCB option, you only need to print these four connector pads and glue them into position. Then there is a cover for the electronic box. There are two rings printed to the cover, where two super strong neodyme magnets are glued to. These are used to hold the cover in position. Inside the box there are two screw holders, that is these triangular shaped objects on the sidewall. Here you can fit a screw which can be adjusted to exactly correspond to the magnets of the cover, thus holding the cover firmly in place. For this box we need to cut an opening into the carrier plate. Make sure the cut is not too big. Use a stencil if necessary. However, make sure that the adherent surfaces of the box can still be completely glued to the carrier plate. As mentioned, I have redesigned the ELO box with open sidewalls, as there are the bumper screw connections and the corrugated tube connections, where all the cables go through to the wand that you might want to access later on, which you couldn't have done with a closed wall design. To cover up the cutout in the carrier plate, we have this covering grid. This cover grid serves three purposes. Number one, it covers the cutout in the carrier plate. Number two, it lets the sound from the speaker pass through unhindered. And it grants access to the electrical switches without having to remove the grid. This grid is held in position magnetically as well. For that we have to fit two spacers between the cover of the electronic box and the grid. That's where the spacer goes. You may have to adjust its length according to the thickness of your carrier plate. The thicker the plate, the longer the spacer must be. You will have to adjust this. However, on the top of the spacer we glue in another super strong magnet. To the cover grid we can glue a washer which connects to the magnet. There are two notches on the side of the grid. These we need because right in these positions there are the connectors between the carrier plate and the Alice frame. It makes removing the grid a little more complicated, but on the other hand we cannot just lose the grid without noticing. The last part of the ELO box is this holder. Here you can clip on the atomizer and the air pump. Both parts make up the smoke generator which will push out smoke through the end filter when overheating the proton pack.
This holder is then glued to the side wall of the box. You may have to adjust the position accordingly. In any case, you will have to access the smoke generator to refill the atomizer with fog fluid. Filler panels. Regarding the shape of the lower edge of this assembly, you may have already guessed where these panels go to. These go north of the sink generator. Then we have these two column like structures. To the one with the hole on top, there will be fitted a hex hose connector. This second column does not have any further function, it just has to look pretty. Let's remove these columns for a second and we can see there are two indicated circles on the center panel where those columns are fit to. There are four filler plates, that's this one and this one, both are pretty flat. This middle plate is a little higher and then we have the corner plate for the upper right corner of the pack. In contrast to the original design of Dance and Fool, I have made the adherent surfaces a lot bigger for a better connection between the filler plates and the carrier plate. That was necessary as the bonding between the carrier plate and the printed parts did not hold up to my expectations. I wouldn't want to lose any parts during a convention and be ridiculed about it. Would you? and I added some holes for cable management. Gun mount. The gun mount must be crafted as solid as possible because on it the wand will be attached. That means that we have to make sure that this structure does not disintegrate or fall off the carrier plate. The same goes for this clip where the wand is attached. If any of this should happen, you have won about 20 hours of reconstructing your wand. The gun mount consists of two shell pieces, which again are printed separately and then glued together. This is the lower shell and this is the upper shell. To the lower shell we will attach a spacer to which then the tongue and groove clip for the wand is attached to. This special clip wouldn't work without the spacer. Here you might ask yourself why the walls of the lower shell are thin as if they were a yogurt cup. Well, even adding additional adherent surfaces here wouldn't be sufficient for the strengths that we are looking for. Therefore we will add three blocks of wood. I have used some roof lath here, symbolized by the green block, and glue them into the lower shell, right up to the top of it, which will then be glued to the carrier plate, and it can additionally be secured with screws through the carrier plate into the wood. The same goes for the wand clip. It will be glued to the side lower shell, 
and in addition to that it will be secured with two screws right into the wooden block. That should give us the strength we need. HGA or Hydrogen Gas Actuator. That would be this barrel-like structure. This was originally designed by Dance and Fool as a two-parter. I have redesigned it to be a one-parter. Here I changed the design for the barrel to have a bottom layer with a centering hole by which we can easily adhere the structure in the correct position. This barrel structure can be printed in one piece without printing support structure. Furthermore, there will be no visible glue edge between the cup and the cover, as originally designed by Dance and Fool. However, no bystander would notice anyway. We can find these two big openings in the sidewall, to which a hex hose connector and an elbow are fitted. As always, these openings are a little smaller and have to be drilled to the correct diameter. Behind the upper opening there is no empty space. Therefore you will have to drill into some structural material here. Don't worry. On the top of the structure we can find these small holes. To these we have to fit some hex socket screws. Dance and Fool made the screw heads printable. However, these turned out to look awful, which is why I prefer the real thing. Get yourself some screws and put them in here. Drill the holes open to the right diameter and fit in a real screw. Hex socket head preferred. The iron arm. The iron arm will be placed on the upper left corner of our proton pack. There it attaches to a shell piece of the booster, which already has an opening for this, and the iron arm is held in position using this little frame structure down here. This center piece again is printed in one piece. To this shell two connectors are fitted, again a hex tube connector and an elbow, the same as on the HGA. There are two openings for these already in the shell, drill to fit. Then there are three more printed pieces fit to the outer wall of the shell. I presume these to be power resistors. These are glued to the outer shell and I additionally use screws for the screw holes. Then we have this top piece, but to attach it, we must first glue in this insert. Once it's glued into position, we can now attach the top piece using real screws again. Then these two stick-like structures are glued to the top piece. Originally printable, Again looking awful, so I have replaced the printable parts by using two sticks made of brass, tube or stick.
power cell. Again, when building the power cell, we have to keep electronics in mind. In this case, two LED modules. These two LED modules will form a bar graph where a blue bar will build up and vanish. And repeat. These two tubes are the original design of Danzenfu. I redesigned this holding structure, holding the tubes in place and aligning them correctly. Again, here we can find enlarged adherent surfaces. This is the shell piece to which we have to fit the two LED modules in the right orientation. The LEDs need to be aligned exactly centered in this window cutout of the shell. And again, you need to place a layer of clear plastic between the LED module and the window. Some blister packs offer sufficient sized pieces of clear flat plastic. So keep your eyes open and if you find it, put it aside. To aid in aligning the LED modules properly, I have constructed this holder structure. Just connect the LED modules, put cables on them, fit them to the holder and then align the holder against this wall. This should align the LED modules right in the center of the window. In the pack, these tubes are pointing downward and the blue bar graph runs up this window from the bottom to the top. Then we have to print these buttons separately and glue them to the top of the shell. This is again done to save printing material, time and get a better overall surface quality. The sink generator. The sink generator is the biggest structure in our proton pack. It basically consists of only three parts. This flat round structure, then this column-like structure, which is glued on top of this opening here, and where later a corrugated tube is put in, like this. Now we have to take care of this big part. This ring-like structure is way too big, even for the CR10. Therefore, you most likely will have to cut it in slicing and print it in several pieces. In my build, I have separated this structure along this line here and again along this line here. To reattach the two halves, I glued some plastic plates to the insides of the cut to help align and strengthen the structure. If instead you cut the structure along here, which is the place where later on the bumper will be attached to, then you would have to fit the nuts for the bumper attachment right where the reattachment point of your two shell halves is thus weakening the structure. The parts are printed without support material again. This means that two protrusions on the shell have to be printed into thin air. One is right here. I have tried this print using support material as well, but the result wasn't better than printing into thin air. Therefore you may have to use a file and some putty to straighten the surfaces. Here we can see the second protrusion. Refinish as necessary. But again, we save a lot of time and printing material. And again, this part was enhanced with enlarged adherent surfaces. 
These enlarge the bonding surfaces between the printed part and the carrier plate. And then there is one additional part. It is this ring-like structure, which is glued to an opening where the corrugated tube meets the shell of the sink generator. Then the corrugated tube is inserted. A locking ring locks it into position, while the tube can still rotate in the fitting. This connection is one of the reasons why I opened the sidewall in the ELO box structure, for it may need some attention from time to time.